Hey, what's going on everyone? The purpose of this video is to provide a quick and dirty tutorial on how to use the Google Sheets app script to do some data processing that you may come across in, well, in my case, for a real estate a cold call campaign. Uh, I just wanna be clear uh, who this tutorial is for. If you have Node.js installed on your computer, then I think you're at a technical level to and to absorb this material uh, right away. Uh, if you've never heard of Node.js, by all means, you know, I, I encourage you, you can ask questions, you can, you can leave me some questions and I'm more than happy to help answer some stuff. Uh, but at the same time, I've also provided um, this code in my GitHub, which is gonna be linked below in the description. So if you just wanna take the code and use it and run with it in your, uh, in your Google Sheet, then by all means, you know, just do that. So with that being said, uh, let me just uh, give an example here. Okay, so let's say that we have a situation like this where we just skip traced a bunch of names and we got back uh, a whole bunch of phones, right? Some people have uh, one phone, other people have no phones, and some people have five phones or even more. Now, on the other hand, we might be using a call system that don't really take the format of this, you know, one phone per column, something like that. Maybe they just take uh, one phone per entry, right? Unfortunately, the call system that I'm using does do that. So, um, and that's kind of the whole point of this tutorial is like, <clears throat> well, I wanted to do it. I tried doing it manually one time and it took way too long. It involved like copying and pasting columns. Um, and by the way, you know, this is nicely organized because in pressing random, uh, it just, it did some of this, but, uh, you know, really what it looks like is they're interspersed, you know, like you, you might have, like, they're not just going to be all organized like this. Like they're just going to be like chunks of like two and three, like you, like you can see here, like some of these were numbers and some of these were empty. And so, um, anyway, so ideally what we would want is we want, um, say like the first name, like here's, let's just go here. So say we want the first name, the last name, uh, the property address and like all the property information. And let's say we also we're doing like direct mail or something. Then we want the, uh, the, the preferred mailing address. And then we want to duplicate the owners, right? So if we got, so if we have here, uh, Thomas, Thomas has five numbers. But instead of one row of Thomas with five numbers, we want five rows of Thomas, one with this number, one with this number, one with this number, and so on, right? And so we just want to duplicate. So if here we have 60 people, right? But let's say on average, each of them have about three numbers. If we just average all this, then um, let's say, you know, we would expect that we want 180 rows with this new newly processed data. Here's going to be my approach, right? If you're at all familiar with Google Sheets, then uh, you know that you can open up a script editor here. There's there's pretty much a whole bunch of stuff that you can that you can do here. So, so you can say function. Um, we could enter a function. Like there's a special function called on on uh, open, right? And pretty much every time the sheet opens, it will it, um, it will run this. So we can say. Uh, uh, you know, let UI equals spread sheet app. Let's spread sheet app dot get UI, right? And then we can say uh, let response equal UI uh, dot prompt. What's your name? And then we can say uh, UI dot alert, and then we can put here in uh, uh, JavaScript uh, string interpolation. We can say, "Nice to meet you." Response dot get response text. Cool. So when we save this, and then we go and refresh. There we go. It says, what's your name? Omar. Okay. 
Hey, nice to meet you too. Cool. But, but, so, I mean, that's just, that's just the overview of what the script editor does. But here's the thing, uh, working with the script editor, it uh, leaves a lot to be desired. It's pretty much like typing in, it's pretty much like trying to code in a Google sheet. So, but, so instead of what we're going to use is we're going to use something called clasp. So clasp is an open source tool that allows you to administer these app script projects from your terminal, i.e. from your local desktop, um, rather than through this, um, through this interface or, or through the scripts console, right? Which is scripts.google.script.google.com. <clears throat> it shows you all these projects. You can actually just run it from your, from your command line. And we're going, we're going to go to the GitHub page <clears throat> and we can just follow through. Um, and pretty much all it tells you to do is you're just going to uh, npm install globally clasp and then you're going to log in to in order to and you log in with 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 your account right so i'm going to do this all right here i'm going to do this all in um vs code so we got a brand new empty workspace let's open up the vs code terminal because i just want to operate everything through here right and so we're here in the phone split and let's say we want to create a new script project. So what we're going to do is we're, so npm install uh, g google slash clasp. Okay, so we installed it. And then let's see, just following this, we're gonna log in. So clasp login, All right? We take this over here, we go through this process, we're gonna log in, yep, 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 yep. Everyone, everything, everything goes as normal here. Okay. And continuing on, so now all we need to do is we just, actually we can follow this nice simple little thing right here. Uh, we can clasp create hello. Um, and it's gonna automatically create a script for us. If you read a little bit more in depth, we can see that we can uh, have a little bit more control over what <clears throat> over what kind of uh, a script we're creating. So let's do a clasp uh, uh, create um, num splitter, and we're going to create it as a sheets. All right, so. It's created this project for us. And by the way, now all that we need to do here, <clears throat> say we want to deploy. So let's, so let's just start with a file. Let's call it first script.js. And we're going to say function, uh, hello. And we're going to say logger log. Hello there. So then when we go to class, uh, push, then it will push these files over to this to our to our script project. Why is it called phone split? I don't get that. Well, anyway, if you open here our phone split, we'll see that we have our hello world function. Okay, so now that we've set that up, let's install TypeScript because that can just make our lives much easier, I believe. All right, so the way that we're gonna do that, we're gonna go here and it teaches us how to do that. So one of the things that it says is that it has full support for TypeScript. And using TypeScript can be very nice. Uh, you get a little bit more um, support with uh, your your code completion and whatnot. So, so you follow the readme from, from the GitHub about TypeScript. Uh, but essentially all you have to do is you um, npm i dash s uh, npm i dash s at types google apps app script when we do that we're gonna down we're gonna install it and we're good now we're good so let's create a typescript file new file We'll call it uh, number splitter dot typescript. What I want to do is I want to create a menu, a drop down menu here, 
uh, say right next to add-ons here that's going to allow us to run this function which is going to uh, is going to do this number splitting a, a lot of this video is just actually just going to be exploring the the apps the google sheets app script api because that's really what that's really all that we're doing in this case so the so we want to get the spreadsheet right um and so a spreadsheet is this actual full spreadsheet and then we're on this sheet within the spreadsheet if we created another sheet right and then we're on sheet two but it's still the same spreadsheet and we can switch back to sheet one right so what we're going to say is we want to get the spreadsheet so we'll say const spreadsheet equals spreadsheet and see already you can kind of see how nice this is because this is helping us a lot right we're going to say spreadsheet app dot uh well in this case we want to get the active spreadsheet right now so whatever we're we're initiating this function from so we'll get active whatever it opens up uh you know there's also other ways of getting a spreadsheet by it's like id so if you want to do if you want to like pull information from another spreadsheet or something like that but for now we'll just keep it simple and we're just getting this right so um and then let's create some menu items so let menu items equal um, the name, like what's going to display, is going to say split phone numbers. Right? And then we can say the function name. What, it, what, what happens when you actually click it, we'll call it split, whoops, split phones. Okay? Sim simple and straightforward. If you wanted to add other menu items here, you could. Um, but we're not going to do that. So I'm just going to spreadsheet dot and see, look, it, it gives you everything. So I already see here, that's what I want to add, right? Add menu. The menu is going to be called, uh, phone number hacks, hacks, phone number hacks. And the menu items that populate it are simply menu items, right? Cool. So, so far so good. So now what's left for us to do is to define split phones. Right? So what actually is going to happen when we click split phones and it runs uh, when we click this button right? and, it, and, and it runs this function. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to define the function. So I'm using uh, uh, ES, I believe this is ES6 notation or uh, split, split phones <clears throat> equals doesn't take any arguments. Okay, so here's the idea. Uh, you know, I've kind of played around, I've developed a script that just does everything manually, but really we can do this much nicer way, right? So in an ideal world, you know, you don't know what kind of, uh, uh, you, you don't you don't know what kind of um, uh, format you could be getting. You know, you could be getting a list from skip trace, from one skip tracer, you could be getting a drive for dollars list, or you could be getting, um, you know, something, something completely different. So at the end of the day, we know, but the, the, the problem remains the same, right? Which is where we have certain columns that have phone numbers and we have certain, and maybe we don't want like middle name or we don't want like, you know, we, we don't want any of these addresses, for example, right? Maybe we, do, we just want certain columns and then we, and we want to map those, some of those columns over to the phone, right? And so that's what we're going to do. We're going to, the user, in this case, me, um, I'm going to input what columns I actually want as far as data and what columns that I want to check if they have phone numbers, right? Um, and that's going to be in the form of an input. And then what I want to do is for every phone number that exists, I want to create a duplicate. I'm not going to create a duplicate in this sheet because it's just going to get like messy, right? But I'm just going to create a new sheet and I'm going to keep on sticking uh, those duplicates in there like copying over that information along with a, a unique phone number, unique phone number, unique phone number, right? So that's gonna be my strategy. Um, so with that being said, let's try it out. This is the idea. I mean, if, if you're familiar with for loops, right? This is essentially just a for loop. Uh, in fact, it's a nested for loop. Why? Well, because one, we want to loop through all the rows. So we want to go from this row and check all the numbers, this row, check all the numbers, this row, check all the numbers, and, and so on. If we find a number, then we do something. If we find a number, then we do something. If we find a blank number is blank, then we could not, then we don't do something. It could be the case where we have like, um, we, 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 you know, we might have a situation like this, where 
you know, the number one exists, number two doesn't exist, number three doesn't exist, but there is number four. So we do in fact want to check all the, all the numbers to see that they exist. So um, let's try that out. Uh, so we know that at, at, at the core we have a, um, a for loop. So if we write, write some pseudocode, we say for, um, for row in our sheet, um, we want to get the row. Uh, get the row and then we want to cycle through the phone columns and if that uh, phone exists copy our data columns plus the phone column to the new sheet right right Cool. So that's that's like the core of this, right? But we're gonna we're gonna spruce it up a little bit and make it make it a little bit nicer. And the way we're gonna do that is, uh, uh, you know, right? The main way is by getting these phone phone columns and getting the data columns explicitly rather than um, hard coding it. Like I could say like, okay, my phone column, you know, uh, cons phone columns equals. So in this case, I might say like. Uh, uh, what like you what is it uh, s you know and that's and, and that's how i want to do it in, in, with this notation otherwise I, i'd have to do it like you know one two three four five six i don't, I don't know what s is like 20 20 or something yeah. anyway so it'd be like s u w something like that right but no when i'm, I'm we're not going to do that what we're going to do is this. So we're going to create a UI similar to what I showed you with the little prompt. So we're going to say let UI equals spreadsheet app dot get UI. Okay. And, uh, and then we're going to let phone response equal the UI dot prompt. We want to prompt the user to say enter comma separated separated values for the phone columns. Well, so what does this mean? So just enter like S comma T comma B, et cetera. And that, and that should be all we need. Okay. Now here's another option. Maybe, maybe you want to use this to not um, necessarily split uh, the phone numbers, but maybe you just want to use it to map. So this can be another way of using it because again, we're going through every row and we're just pulling certain um, and, and we're pulling certain data. So I'm going to say uh, or leave blank to just map the data columns. And, 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 and what are these data columns? Well, these data columns, uh, so, so data is what I refer to as like the information other than the phone number. So like the name and address, for example, the name and the property address is the, is the data and then the phone is the phone number like or the contact information so the user is going to get a prompt and then they're going to um type in some stuff right and then so we want to get what get whatever they type and process it somehow and we're going to process it by putting it into a list so let phone columns uh, we can define this as an array of strings uh, you don't have to get if, if you're not familiar with typescript or whatever you just use javascript that's that's fine we, you can just say uh, you can just see, do this that's fine Okay, so if phone response dot get selected button uh, does not equal UI dot button dot close, and what does this mean? That means that so when when they when the thing pops up, you can either enter something and then press OK, or you can just exit out. So I want to check here. If the user exited out, then we're not going to submit this. Um, if they didn't though, then we, in other words, we're just going to be blank. Well, we're going to go like this. It's an empty, an empty array. But if they did, then what we want to do is we want to say phone columns actually equals uh, the phone response dot get response text dot split. And we want to split on those columns. Now, um, I'm expecting the way I have it, the way I envision it is I'm just going to enter like for the phones, I'm going to enter S comma U comma W, right? 
um, to be on the safe side, uh, maybe someone has a, uh, a space in between those commas, right? So that's going to screw it up because if we're using that A1 notation to pull up, uh, to pull up um, cells uh, later on in our, in our for loop, then we don't want to get M space 1 or M space 5, right? Because that's going to cause an issue. So instead, what, we're, what, we'll, what we'll do is we will, uh, so that split is now an array. So it looks something like this. So just as an example, so if we have our input was uh, R, O, X, right? Then uh, after this line, we have R, O, X. Well, actually, because these are all, these are strings that we have, right? R O X, right? Um, now, on the other hand, if we had something like this, if we had a space, then we would have uh, this R, and then this would be O space. So we have to go in and ensure that um, none of none of our characters uh, have any um, have any white space, right? And the way we're going to do that is with dot map and this will return to us so we have here our letter and then we're going to return letter are we potentially yeah yeah letter or more accurate would say this is our characters our chars and we just say chars dot split oh not split sorry trim trim just as an aside, you know, when you do trim, it, it actually it doesn't, it's not going to return. Why is the W3 schools page so crappy? Isn't that, it's kind of ironic, isn't it? Like, maybe not using crappy stuff in my console log and a whole bunch of errors and stuff. Anyway, bar foo equals, oh well. So we go foo, this looks like that, right? Now let's say we want to do foo dot trim. Oh, nice, it's trimmed. So does that mean our foo is trimmed? No, our foo still looks like that. Why is that? Well, because strings are um, immutable. So this foo, so this foo dot trim, it returns a new string that is uh, the result of trimming foo, but it doesn't actually change foo. In fact, foo can never be changed. So if we say like foo uh, six, the the fourth the, or the fourth um, item in foo we'll see that it's E, but let's say we wanted to reassign that. So foo four equals um, I, right? Is that gonna work? Foo? No, it's not gonna work. So anyway, that's neither here nor there. Let's just go back to this guy and then trim it, right? So cool. So now that we have our, we, so now that we know what columns are the, our phone numbers, let us get into let info calls the info columns and again what I mean by this is this is a string that looks like that equals um, this would be like first name last name address etc so now we want to prompt the user, okay, now that you've entered your phone columns, what are the info columns that you want to enter? So let info risk equals ui.prompt. Again, enter uh, pretty much the same thing here. So we're gonna, I'm just gonna copy this, right? Instead of inf phone response, we're gonna say info say response so info response I'll click selected button if we haven't closed then we're going to take the info response and we're gonna assign that to the info columns with me so far okay great so if you don't provide anything here then it's okay because we'll just get we'll just get a list of all the different phone numbers sends any information any context about where they came from which you know that's what we want to do, you know, whatever floats your boat. Let's, so now let's get to the meat of the matter, right? We're keeping this in mind. This is what we want to do. 
um, first things first, we have to actually get our sheets. Like, like we have to know what we're dealing with. We're, we're dealing with sheets here, right? So we have to be able to access those objects when using the API methodology, the, the API methods. So, so let, uh, so let's start with our original sheet. So in this case, this would be our original sheet, right? Sheet one is our original sheet. So original sheet equal the spreadsheet app dot get active sheet. This will give you that, and by active sheet, the active sheet is like what you like what your what the interface is. Like right now, this is the active sheet. Um, right now, sheet three is the active sheet. Sheet one is no longer the active sheet. So if we were to call get active sheet right now, we would get this sheet. Um, we could still access this, but we wouldn't call get active sheet. We could say like get sheet um, by name, right, and put in sheet one, or get sheet by ID, right. And this could be, and this is the ID. Um, I don't actually know how you find the ID, but I'm sure you could. So anyway, um, so we get the active sheet. That's the original sheet, and then we're gonna create a new sheet too, right? And this is the sheet we're gonna split. So we're gonna say let split sheet equal. Again, we're getting the spreadsheet app dot get active spreadsheet, and the reason we're doing this, right, is because we want to we want to be able to create a new sheet, right? So um, get active sheets allows it. Uh, get active sheet gives us access to a sheet, right? You can't create a new sheet from a sheet, right? That's because it's like it's out of its scope, right? A sheet is like th there's the whole spreadsheet, right? So like there's like this whole app that's the spreadsheet. Right, and then one of its children is a sheet. So this, this, so the whole spreadsheet can create a new sheet. But this sheet by itself, like this sheet that we're just dealing with, or this sheet right here that we're dealing with, they can't create sheets from themselves. Right? I, I don't know if that I don't know if that makes sense. It's it's a matter of like the uh, it's a matter of like the scope. Right? So in order to be able to create a sheet, you have to go a level above. So instead of getting the active sheet, you get the active spreadsheet. In this case, the active spreadsheet is reach one, teach one. Okay, so now that we got the active spreadsheet, we're going to insert a sheet. So we're gonna say insert sheet. We're gonna insert a sheet. And here we can just leave it blank and it will say like sheet four, right? In this case, right? Because every time it inserts a sheet, it'll be like sheet three, sheet four. But here, let's actually give it a name. So we'll call it split numbers right okay okay and let's make an assumption here which i think is a fair assumption to make because it usually ends up being true and that is that the first row of our sheet is going to be headers right so but we'll call it out in a comment so we'll say assume we have headers on our original okay so we'll say const. So first we want to get those headers, right? So the idea is that say I have like name, um, first name, last name, and address, right? I want to get those three headers and I want to copy that over to split nums or uh, split numbers, right? Because split numbers is going to have all the all the first name, last name, and, and addresses for all the owners, and then it's also going to have a phone column tacked on here that's going to have each unique phone number, right? So that's exactly what we're going to do. So const info headers, which is also going to be a string of, and you know if you really wanted to, I think you could. I mean, if we, you, you could, so you, you can access the ranges in the sheets with either numbers. Um, you can I think of it like a two two D array, or you can access it uh, using the A one notation. I'm just going to use the A one notation because it's just easier to reason about in my mind, especially when inputting that stuff. Right. I don't, I don't know what the number of the column is, but I do know that it's column S or Q, right? So, uh, so luckily we have these info columns, right? And by the way, um, this is not actually accurate. So this is going to be like F T R, right? And that will map over to this. Right, so this is actually what we're doing right here. We're going from the columns to the headers, right? Um, so we're gonna say info columns dot map. So with, with every one of those info columns, we're going to take that letter, so the F, the T, or the A, and we're going to 
get that cell. So we're going to say original sheet from that original sheet dot get range. Get range is a really important function in this API. Um, get range defines any type of pretty much imagine any time you highlight anything in Google Sheets, right? So if you're going like this, you just got the range from D2 all the way to F12, right? You got that range. If you go like this, you just got the range of J10. That's still considered a range, even if it's a single single value, right? So what we want to do, because let's say we have, um, someone has given us E and H and K, right? So what we want to do is we want to get E1, H1, and K1, right? That's what we want to do. And we want to insert Say we copy that right here and we go right here and we paste it and we just want to go like that right so now we're gonna like that right so how do we do that in this sheet so we're gonna get the range and uh, now keep in mind this is a single letter so right now we're dealing with F say in this test example right let's actually copy this over right this is what we want to do That. and what is our range going to be again I'm going to use the string interpolation and I'm going to want to include that letter right so a letter and I just want to get the very first row so whatever that letter is so f1 t1 r1 right and then notice it's complaining right here because this is not enough because get range is just going to get a range. So if we were to just map it like this right now, what we have, instead of having this, we have uh, range, range, range. In this case, we got range of uh, range of F1, T1, and R1. And that's, that's not what we want. What we want is to actually get those header names. So we have to do another map. We're going from that range, that, that array of ranges into a, an array of values. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to map. And for every range, we say value. Boom. And just like that, that's what we needed. We're missing one header. And what is that? The phone number, right? So we're just going to push it on there. We're going to say info headers dot push phone right so after we've gotten name uh, first name last name and address we also want to get phone and so with this with this new great list of headers what are we going to do well let's add it to our new sheet so we're going to say split sheet split sheet dot append row and we're just going to give it our info headers Info headers just like that. Yeah. So now we look like this. So now it looks like this. We just went here, here, here. We took those we, and we copied them in addition to this one right here. Boom. Like that. Cool. So far, so good. Well, now we're actually going to begin this. Well, first thing we have to know is how, how much are we iterating? Uh, we've already said that we want to go. Uh, we want to hit uh, this one, this one, this one. So we want to hit all the phone number rows or all the phone number columns. But um, how do we? How far down are we going? We're going to get the last row, and that's going to be our that's going to be our first for loop. We're going to loop through every row in the data, and then loop through every column. Const last row equals the original sheet dot get last row. Pretty groundbreaking stuff, huh? <laughs> never would have never seen it coming. So now we're just gonna start our for loop. So for let row equals two, right? It's it's because it's a, a one index, so the first row is actually just the header. So we're starting at that second row, and then we're gonna say we actually want to go up to the last row. So last row, last row, and then we're incrementing by one. So just your standard for loop in JavaScript. As we're as we're looping through here, say now we're here at Ancelli, right? Well, we want to get, let's say we're using this 
E, H, and K, we want to get Washington, Bothell, and Coy. So in order to do that, we're going to say, um, we're going to create this info data. So uh, remember, we have the info columns, right? The info columns are saying F, T, and R, right? Let me get rid of this so it's a little bit more clear. So F, T, and R is our F info column. So we'll say, um, we want to get that data. So we're going to call it data. Let the info data equal our info calls, uh, info columns, dot map. Again, you know, using, you, using, using this map allows you to just reason about this data structure, right? In a, in, in a, in a more clean way, right? Because I don't want to like iterate through that data structure as well. I, I, I want to do the same thing. So I just, I have a chunk of columns and I want to turn that into a chunk of data, right? And the best way of thinking about that is what's known as functionally. Uh, so for every letter in my info column, in, in my, in my info column, uh, I want to I want to get I want to get that range so I want to get original sheet dot get range of that letter and instead of one so remember we did the same thing up here with the one but instead what we're going to do can you get <laughs> we're gonna get the row right because we got the letter and then the row. So again, going back to our example, if our row here is two, right? Our row is what's being tracked in this for loop, it's two. And we have all those info columns, which is F, which is in this case is E, H, and K. We're gonna say E2, H2, K2. So now we have, again, but these are just ranges. So as we saw from the last time, what we have to do is we have, to, in order to turn that list of column uh, column names into a list of column data we have to turn first into a range and then we have to get those ranges values right so dot map range and we'll say uh, range dot get value okay but well, we're not done there we're, we're not done there yet right um, so what we have to do is we have to do another for loop and this is where we actually go and check every phone number to see if it exists if it exists, we're gonna copy that over. Let's just say for let, and this is gonna be a different way of doing a for loop. You know, this is a, it's kind of rolled in a JavaScript, uh, JavaScript lesson in addition to um, an app script lesson. But let phone call, phone call of phone columns. And what does this mean? Um, this, if you're not familiar with this way of uh, writing a for loop, if I was if I was to write this in another way, I would say for let i equals zero, i is less than phone columns dot length, i plus plus phone call. Oops, let I just realized it sounds like phone call. Let phone call equal phone columns i. Right. This is essentially what I'm doing, but instead of writing all this. You can just kind of shortcut it and just say that uh, every time, well, every time through this loop, what I call phone call is going to be phone call I, phone columns I. In, in given in this notation, so just like a handy little handy little uh, next generation uh, JavaScript. It, sh it should be. It's not. I don't think it's next generation anymore. It's been around for a while actually. So every phone call is a uh, is a character indicating a, um, uh, the column, right? So. I'm gonna go like this. We're gonna say let current number, the current number, equal again our original sheet dot get range of uh, what's our column gonna be? Phone call exactly. And what is our row going to be? Well, the same row that we've been on, which is up here. It's row dot row. Of course, we don't know if that's going to be empty or not, right? Because if, if, if we've defined every number that we need to get, then uh, we could have a situation like this where we go, okay, so we have S, U, W, Y, and A, A. So we go here. We'll say, let's say we reach this row and we say, okay, S, W, um, or S, U, W, 
Uh, okay, so are we just gonna like copy like an empty blank thing? No, we have to make sure that it is actually um, a real, there's actually, there is actually a, a number in there. Well, we're not gonna do that level of validation. You could if you really wanted to, to make sure that the number in there matches maybe some criteria, like maybe it's less than, or it's equal, it's equal to 10, or you could even put in a regex, for including like if it has a plus one number, that's a little bit more, um, there's just a few more, like, like one or two more lines of code. Um, if you wanna do that and you wanna, and you have questions, you can feel free to uh, leave a comment and I'll answer that for you. So if uh, the cur num is blank, so again, they provide a nice, uh, is blank for you. It'll return true if there's nothing in there, but um, if it's not blank, then what we want to do is we want to append a new row to our split sheet. Remember, split sheet is our new sheet um, in which we have all this data split out. So split sheet dot append row and we're going to take that info data and remember info data contains info on the owner and we're going to, we're not just going to do that we're going to take the owner data and then we're going to tack on the phone number and the reason the way that we do that is with a function called concat concat was going to get a um, kernum dot get value so remember, kernum is a range, and we still, in order to get that number, we have to we have to get the value. So, and well, you know what? That's that's pretty much it. It just goes through and it uh, and it checks to see if there's a phone number, and if there's a phone number, it will just take that phone number along with the owner data, and it will copy it down into uh, into the new sheet. Um, really, the only kind of a cool thing that we did here is that we allow the user to input whatever they want. So this 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 can allow you to be a little bit more flexible um, in case you get data that looks weird, but you want to do the same thing. All right, so with that, uh, there's only one thing left to do, and that is to push, push it, push it to the limit, push it and run it. So we're going to say class push. Now, if we go up here, we should see it. Let's refresh and then we open the project and lo and behold so this is all, this is the one script and then here is our other script number splitter dot gs now i just want you to notice something right so let's look at how it looks like in google and how it looks like in our vs code and you'll notice that well, while they do look similar, there is some important differences, right? You'll notice that things look a little different right here. Um, var split phone equals function versus something like this, right? Everything's a var, right? Um, then if you, when you go into this loop, right? And so we just defined our loop right here, but actually they created a loop function, right? And, uh, you know, they just did all kinds of all kinds of different, you know, optimization. I don't know if you call it optimizations, but they just have to make it work with uh, the engine that, or whatever platform uh, that uh, this stuff runs on. All right, so that is our split. Now let's put it to the test. Now I gotta admit here, there's a part of my knowledge that I'm not really sure about, which is how you can actually just attach um, this script to any arbitrary sheet. Um, I don't think there's a way of doing it easily. Like you can either you either have to create like an add-on or something like that. So we're just gonna take the we're just gonna do the old school way. Or right, I want to tell you guys that I will include the GS code as well um, in the GitHub, so you don't actually have to go in and um, and type all this stuff. And you know, if you don't like care about TypeScript and deploying and Clasp and all that, you can just take the code as it is and um, and copy and paste it into your sheet. So let's take let's take this like this. Let's copy it, and then let's go here. Let's go to our reach one, teach one, and let's go to our script editor. All right, remember we had this, and now we're going to replace it. We're going to replace it. It has its own on open, and it's turning into a menu item. So when we when we save this, right, we should see that in a in just the jiffy, uh, it'll change up a little bit. Maybe we just need to refresh. Let's give it a nice refresh and we should see phone numbers pop up right here yep phone number hacks all right guys well you ready ready to check out all right 
Oh, first thing I want to do is I want to zoom out a little bit so I can see what all the columns that I that I need are. Uh, you can okay. So let's so let's run it. Let's see what happens. Split phone numbers. Oh, it requires authorization. <laughs> I don't really know what that means, but okay. Okay, that's fine. I authorize you. All right, let's try again. Hey, enter comma separated value for the phone columns or leave blank. Okay, so this is where we enter the phone columns. So the phone column here is S U W Y and A A. Can you see that? And then enter for the info that you want. Okay, so let's say that instead of the uh, first and last, I want to put the last. I want to put the last name first. So I'm going to put here M, and then I'm going to put K. Oh well, of course I want the property address. I guess that's the main part. So I'm going to get all the property information. So I'm going to get uh, C, D, E, F. Right, and then I do want to get that preferred mailing address. So I'll go in and I'll also get. O and Q, O and P and Q. All right, so let me press OK. It's either gonna blow up or it's gonna work. <laughs> Hope it doesn't blow up. All right, OK, all right. So we see here what's going on. Every phone number is different. Wagner, let's see what's up with Wagner Thomas. Oh, there he is. Last name and, and Thomas, right there. So, name last, okay, Wagner Thomas, he should have five entries, one, two, three, four, five, because he has five phone numbers, and here our script is continuing to add names, now, everything is going as expected, like using some sort of macro or something um, like this is not really like an optimized way of doing things, but it gets the job done, I mean probably even if you're doing 5,000, you just got to make sure you leave your computer alone to do it for a few hours. A, bi a big part of all this has to do with uh, your data quality and processing the data, right? So if you're not if you're not setting up that good pipeline, then you're going to potentially be leaving a lot on the table and you're going to be giving yourself a headache as far as your time goes and your money is going to be going to waste as well. So just having skills like these um, can be very beneficial. But yeah, I hope I hope that uh, that was educational to some extent. Um, kind of gave you a little bit of an overview of how to think about dealing with uh, sh Google Sheets. And obviously like what this operation that I did was pretty relatively straightforward. You know, you can look through the API and ref and go through a lot more in depth stuff. So um, uh, yeah, so anything, you have any questions? Uh, if you like this, you know, uh, give it a like. All right, take care now.